Hi, Gerald Friedman, Department of Economics, UMass Amherst again. And we're here today to talk about why men make more money than women and why even dorky guys get good dates. And this has to do with occupations and jobs. The orthodox theory doesn't deal with occupations and jobs on the idea that everyone will be paid fairly, meaning they will be paid what they produce, their marginal product, and they'll be paid that because if anybody tried to discriminate against you because of your gender, your race, your hair color, or whether you're left-handed or right-handed, if anybody tried to do that, then you would just go get a job with somebody else who wasn't discriminating because all occupations are open to all people. Now, there are some occupations where it does look that way. For example, nurses. Women get jobs as nurses. If a man wants a job as a nurse, it's not a problem. He gets a job as a nurse. Nowadays, lawyers, economists, doctors, these occupations are acting like nursing in that Men and women both get jobs pretty freely in these occupations. In these occupations, the gatekeeper, the way, the, the regulation of who gets trained and into the occupation, the gatekeeping function is done by universities and colleges, and these are regulated by the government and cannot, are not allowed to discriminate. That is not the way some other occupations work, especially in the trades. How many plumbers, how many women plumbers have you seen? How many women electricians? I mean, there are. There are some. How many non-white skilled tradespeople do you see? There are some, but not many. And the exclusion of women and minorities from these occupations contributes mightily to the lower earnings for women and minorities. And here's how it works. Imagine plumbing. A labor supply curve of women, a labor supply curve of men. The way I've drawn this, more men than women at any wage want to be plumbers. Doesn't matter. You could draw them equally. The total labor supply for plumbing is the number of women at some wage plus the number of men total. That is without discrimination. And you will get a wage for plumbing, which will be about here. That's without discrimination. Without discrimination, there will be men who want to be nurses and women who want to be nurses. And you'll have a labor supply of women and men as nurses which will give you a certain wage for nursing, which, the way I've drawn it, is about the same, a little less, than the wage for plumbing. What happens if the plumbers, the male plumbers, decide they don't want women around? Now, why would they do this? Good reason. Get rid of the women. Only men are allowed to be plumbers. Labor supply goes from this to the male labor supply. And wages for plumbers, for male plumbers, go up. They think that's great. They're making more money. What happens to the women? They go off and become nurses. What else are they going to do? I mean, some of them will sit home because wages will drop and they'll say, okay, I'll spend my time raising children, baking bread, or, um, or cleaning house. But others will need market work. Labor supply for women, women too. This is the new labor supply with discrimination for women. You still have men working as nurses, so you get a new labor supply curve, which I've called all two. The new labor supply for nursing has a wage down here. Women nurses, male nurses, are losing. Wages are a lot lower. Suddenly, you have a wage gap. 
male plumbers earning up here, women nurses, and some male nurses earning down here. Men are making more money than women. Who gains? The men, male plumbers gain. Anybody who wants a nurse thinks this is pretty good because they can get a nurse cheap. Women lose. Men who want to be nurses lose. Anybody who wants to use a plumber loses. And if you've ever had to have a toilet fixed, you know about that. Men in general gain because women look around and say, they, my job prospects aren't that good. In a world where men can control access to good trades, men earn more than women, men get good dates. Thank you.